Bienvenidos al curso de Inglés 1. Welcome to English 1. Welcome to this second week. In this second week, we are going to pay attention on topics about possessive pronouns, the use of a, an, this, that, these, and those, and count and uncountable nouns. So pay attention and welcome to this class. Thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, we are going to pay attention to the first presentation. The first presentation is about possessive pronouns. Last class, we learned about pronouns, all right, the importance of them, and also we talked about possessive adjectives. I'm talking about my, your, his, her, its, your, heart, and their. So today we are discussing about possessive pronouns. And so here uh, let's discuss about this. Here we have uh, two examples. This is my band. Yours. So here, on the first chart, we see in color green the possessive ablative my. And for the other hand, we can see the red one, yours. That this is the possessive pronoun. Yeah, my. And for the other hand, about possessive pronouns, it's gonna be mine. This is the pronunciation. First one is my and the another one is mime okay as you can see right here my band as i told you before yes do not forget that a possessive adjective is never alarmed nunca está solo okay it's always with a noun siempre está acompañado de un sustantivo but for the other hand just you verify and see the yours it's a land yours it's a land yours está solo entonces la conclusión es que el possessive pronoun it's always a land siempre está solo okay like us <laughs> all right so let's continue my mime your Yours. Okay. This is like first and second person. Primera y segunda persona. His. His. For example, this is his book. Ese libro. Este es el libro de él. Pero si solo quiere decir que ese es su libro. This book is his. Alright, do not forget it. Entonces nos damos cuenta que frecuentemente este possessive pronoun va a terminar en una oración, pero siempre va a estar solo. Puede estar en el medio o al final de la oración. Alright, let's continue. Her. Her name is Maria. Hers. Possessive pronoun. Hers. Okay. This is my book. No. This book is hers. Este es mi libro, no, este es el libro de ella. It's, it's, the possessive pronoun, no one. It doesn't have a, poss a possessive pronoun. Okay, so let's continue with our, our, it's going to be ours, ours. For example, this is my house, okay, and this house I live with my father, sister, uh, uh, mother, all right, so this house is ours, this house is ours, esa casa es nuestra, this classroom is ours, esta clase es nuestra, okay, your Yours, the same thing as we saw before. And finally, their, that's going to be theirs, okay? For example, this book, oh, all right, this university is ours, okay, it's nuestra. But the other one, the other university is theirs, 
pertenece a ellos, dos de ellos. Ok, so let's uh, see here some examples. Here we use possessive adjectives before a noun. True, false. Ok, let's see. True. Usamos adjetivos posesivos antes de un sustantivo. We use possessive pronouns before a noun. False, false. Usamos el adjetivo pronombre posesivo, usamos el pronombre posesivo antes de un sustantivo. False, imposible. It's always alone. We use possessive pronouns to replace a possessive adjective and a noun. True, false. True. That's correct. Nosotros usamos el, el pronombre posesivo para reemplazar a un adjetivo posesivo y a un sustantivo para ya no mencionarlos nuevamente. Here says, uh, okay, as you can see, this is my book, that's yours, yes. Okay, let's listen. This cell phone is mine. Jane's bag is pink. This isn't hers. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now it's time to practice to see how much do you understand. I'm sorry for that. Here says, complete the sentences with the correct possessive pronouns. This is Carrie's coat. This coat isn't hers. And here we see her coat. So we have a keyword. Tenemos una palabra clave que nos va a ayudar. This is your CD. Your CD. What is the possessive pronoun that we are gonna use? It's yours. Uh huh. That's very good. So try to complete. Okay. I will give you uh, exactly uh, one minute. All right. And a half. To write your responses. Okay? So later I will show you the answers just to verify that you are right. Okay, un minuto y medio para completar, luego les diré pues las respuestas correctas y verificar que ustedes están bien. That hat is my or mine. Mine, yes, because we are seeing my hat. These musical instruments are Frank and Paul's. So they are theirs. Your bike looks like, yeah. Mine. Mm -hmm. Do not forget to practice the pronunciation during the video. Entonces, practica la pronunciación con el video. This is our bag. I'm sorry, this is our duck. It's ours. Very nice. Whose dictionary is this? Emma's. It's. What's the answer? It's hers. Yeah. This is Tom's guitar. A guitar. It isn't his. Correct. Good. Oh, sorry for that. Here it says, write sentences with the correct possessive pronouns. Uh, my, cell phone f my cell phone isn't pink. That's not be my cell phone. So it isn't mine. So what can you tell me about number one? Mm -hmm. So, for example, this is affirmative. Um, here it says these books. Okay, B, your books. We know B is, is and R. Suppose these books are yours. Yes, the, these books are yours. 
Okay, what about number two? Follow the same sequence for number one. Sigue la misma rutina de la número uno. That game consult, singular, ¿no? Is his game consult. So, what's the answer? Correct. Very good. That game console is his. Thank you so much. Next. Is this Karen and Tim's dog? Yes. It is. What do you think? Theirs. Uh -huh. Yes. It's theirs. Yes, it's de ellos. Okay. Because we are talking about Karen and Tim. Uh huh. Your yard is big. Our yard. I mean, our yard. Okay. Ours. Ours. Is small. Uh, ours is small. Uh, Julie's or Julie's bike. It's blue. That's Essen hers. Uh huh. That's very nice. Thank you so much for your participation. Now let's continue with the use of a and and. Okay, so let's start. My name's Lucia. That's that's a nice name. Here we're we're uh, very fine. How we have to use a. Uh, and during a sentence, okay. Another example here: It's an eraser. It's a pen. So, what is the final conclusion that you can get watching out these examples right here? The final idea is this: A uh, uh, and we use for singular nouns. But the most important is that a uh, right after a uh, we have to use all right a noun in singular but the first word must sound with a consonant word and when you're using and after a noun in singular do not forget that the first wo word the pronunciation must be with vowel, ¿ok? No se olviden que cuando usamos el A y el AN es para singular y después el A tienen la palabra o el, el sustantivo que va a estar adelante, o perdón, después debe tener un sonido consonante. P, P, pen, yeah. And for the other hand, por el otro lado, ant, es procedido de un sonido vocal del sustantivo en singular. Eraser, eraser, and elephant, and elephant, and elephant, book, a book, laptop, a laptop, orange, and orange. So we use and before a vowel sound and am before other sounds. Usamos el an antes de un sonido vocal y el a antes de otro sonido que no sea pues vocal. Obviamente sería pues consonante. So please be careful here on the left to the following instructions. When you it's pronounced you at the beginning of a word. We must use a, not and. For example, university. You see, the spelling it's u, as you said this in, in Spanish, but pronunciation is u. So the most important here is the pronunciation. That's why it says a university, and the second one is the same. The spelling is with H, but the sound is our, so the sound is in vowel, so we must use and, and our, okay, and university, and our. Lo más importante es enfocarse en el sonido, como hemos visto y han evidenciado, uni universidades, the spelling, la escritura está con U, con vocal, pero la pronunciación es you, igual pasa con la H, ¿no? 
pero la pronunciación es our, so pay attention to the, to the pronunciation. Presta atención a la pronunciación, ¿de acuerdo? It's an orange bag. It's a cell phone. Very nice, congratulations. So it's time to practice. Tokyo is a city in Japan. Jake is... I need your participation. Jake is an intelligent boy. Her dad is... Yeah, correct. A teacher at my school. It's... Yes! It's an awesome cell phone. Felix is a cool name. It's an orange backpack. It's what's your idea? Yes, a soccer game. Very nice. Here I have more exercises for you. Number one, a hand. Two, yes, a ruler. Three, I wanna listen to you. Quiero escucharlos. Vamos a suponer que estamos en vivo. Come on. Yes, a fish. Yeah. Four, an ear. Yes. And five, a mouse. A mouse. Very nice. Thank you so much. Now here we continue with this, that, this and those. So let's learn about them. In singular and in plural, we have to use all of them. But in singular, we have two important, uh, two important demonstrative adjectives that we must pay attention on it. Okay, I will try to use this. For example, uh, here, this and that. This and that. In singular. But in plural, these and those. Okay? So, what is the difference? Okay, okay. when we're talking about singular, of course, most of the time, we are going to use is. And in plural, of course, are. But in that situation, the difference between this and that is the, uh, is the following uh, example. Let's see, pay attention. This is my book. That is my dog. According to the picture and sentences, do you have a final conclusion? Don't ya? Yes? El de se usa, or oh, I want to say this first in English. This, most of the time, we use for near, okay, near situations. And here, it's far. When the noun that you are talking to is far, you have to use that. When the noun you are talking to is really near, you must use this. Si la, el sustantivo que te estás refiriendo está muy lejos, pues tienes que usar that. Y si está cerca, this. Obviamente, in singular. And here is opposite, right? These are my books. Those are my dogs. You see? When the noun that you are talking to in plural it's very near from you, you have to say these. But when the nouns that you are talking to are really far, you must use those. Si el sustantivo que estás hablando en plural está cerca tuyo, debes de decir these. Pero si los sustantivos que estás hablando están muy lejos, en distancia, no tienes que decir those. And, f and now I think it's very easy to understand. Right? Thank you. So, how can I do this? So just give me a moment. Okay, uh -huh. goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Liesel. These, this, and these are things that are near. And that and those are for things that they are far. This y these son para eh, sustantivos, cosas que están cerca. Y that and those para sustantivos que están lejos. Do not forget it. Okay, so let's listen. This is your cell phone. These are my books. 
Thank you so much. Now let's verify and let's see uh, the exercises. Please, one minute, very fast to, to give me the answers. In a piece of paper, write your answers, practice your pronunciation, and we are ready. I'm going to start. But you know, you can uh, just put it here, pause, and just wait one or two minutes just to verify your answers. Okay, so I, I start here. What's the answer? Near. These are my parents. That is my dog. This is my house. Those are my DVDs. That is my brother. These are my game consoles. Games consoles. That is an awesome cell phone. Very nice. So we're going to continue with the exercises and here we must um, complete some sentences okay using this that these and those considering the pictures right here for example this is my friend number one do not forget with singular I mean with this and that we must use is uh, for these and those are so what is the number one are those girls in my class are those girls in my class now I think you have a clear idea about it now can you tell me the answer of number two what is the answer in number two this is near or far? Yes, correct. It is near. This is my cell phone. This is my cell phone. What about number uh, three? Yes, very good. This is my bike. This is my bag. Mr. F uh, Miss, Mrs. Jones, number four. Mrs. Jones. How is Mrs. Jones? from these guys right here it's far right so it will, be, it will be that that is Mrs. John's number five this is our dog correct yes correct congratulations and thank you so much for your participation uh, let's continue here with the last topic that we're seeing about count and known count nouns okay so just to pay attention here with countable and uncountable nouns for countable nouns it's very easy because most of the time we have two uh, positions singular and plural nouns para sustantivos contables es muy fácil deducir si es contable o no porque un sustantivo contable tiene un sustantivo singular y a la vez tiene un plural es decir si hablamos de ex que es plural entonces el plural es ex y en singular es ek entonces nos damos cuenta que en contable nouns puede ser un poco más español aquí porque es un tema un tema un poco tal vez difícil de entender a lo mejor El sustantivo que tiene plural obviamente va a tener singular y eso lo caracteriza y lo hace sustantivo contable, ¿de acuerdo? Porque se puede contar. Recordemos que en plural hay sustantivos que parecen singular pero son plural, que son los sustantivos irregulares. Los irregular, uh, los irregular, los irregular plural nouns, por ejemplo, man, men, woman, women, child, children, person, people, tooth, thief foot feet so be careful about it okay so i will give you some examples a tomato two tomatoes an egg two eggs se caracterizan en singular porque el sustantivo singular siempre va okay so just to pay attention here with countable and uncountable nouns for countable nouns it's very easy because most of the time we have two uh, positions singular and plural nouns para sustantivos co contables es muy fácil deducir si es contable o no porque un sustantivo contable tiene un sustantivo singular y a la vez tiene un plural es decir si hablamos de ex que es plural 
Entonces, plural es ex y en singular es ec. Entonces, nos damos cuenta que en contable nada más. Puede ser un poco más español aquí porque es un tema un, un poco tal vez difícil de entender. A lo mejor. El sustantivo que tiene plural obviamente va a tener singular. Y eso lo caracteriza y lo hace sustantivo contable. ¿De acuerdo? Porque se puede contar. Recordemos que en plural hay sustantivos que parecen singular, pero son plural, que son los sustantivos irregulares. Los irregular, uh, los irregular, los irregular plural nouns. For example, man, men, woman, women, child, children, person, people, tooth, teeth, foot, feet. So be careful about it. Okay, so we give you some examples. A tomato. Two tomatoes, an egg, two eggs, se caracteriza en singular porque el sustantivo singular siempre va a estar antecedido para dar la cantidad a lo mejor de a o a, ¿de acuerdo? A tomato, an egg, and the plural one, the quantity, or you can use some of any, most of them, two tomatoes, two eggs. An uncountable noun, la característica especial del uncountable noun, the most important about uncountable nouns is that they look, they look like singular, ok? Su característica importante es que tienen esa apariencia de singular siempre. Entonces, si ustedes encuentran un sustantivo con milk, milk no va, entonces es incontable. Esa es la estrategia para saber si es contable o incontable. Pasta, pastas, no. O sugar, sugars, no. So it's uncountable. Coffee, coffees, no. Uncountable, okay? So this is the strategy that I can give you in order to find if the noun is countable and uncountable. Entonces, es el consejo que les puedo dar para identificar si es contable o no. ¿De acuerdo? We use a and with singular countable nouns. Yes, correct. Usamos el a y el am con sustantivos contables, ya que estén en singular. Si, nos, si hemos dado, si se, siempre has dado atención, pues han dado cuenta que en uncountable nouns, sustantivos incontables, no usamos ni el a ni el am, porque no se puede contar o no se puede medir la cantidad de ese sentido. ¿No? A ver, dice así: uncountable nouns can only be singular. Bread, not a bread, not two breads. Exacto, es lo que les he mencionado. Los sustantivos incontables solo pueden estar en singular. Como el caso de bread, que es pan. No, no puede ser a bread ni tampoco two breads. Bread. Enough, suficiente. Pero ¿con qué puedo acompañar, profesor? Lo puedes acompañar con el some. Some milk, some pasta, some bread. Si quieres eh, decir que hay algo de leche, algo de pasto, de espagueti o algo de, de pan. ¿Ok? So we have some examples here just to practice pronunciation. There's some pasta. There's an orange. Mm -hmm. Do not forget about it. Entonces la estructura ahora está acompañada del there is y there are. En caso de su ejercicio va a estar acompañado de there is, there are y casos de simple present o present continuous. Pero ya es factible. Lo más importante es reconocer dichos sustantivos. Ok. Uh, ok, ok. Vamos a practicar, ¿de acuerdo? Los contables y incontables con el enfoque del deris y derar, ¿ya? Ok, en singular now, si hablamos de ek, there's an ek, o there is an ek. En plural, eh, there are some eggs. And in, in countable now, usaremos el there is some bread, ¿de acuerdo? En el incontable también usamos el some. Pero, como ustedes se han dado cuenta, no cambia, ¿de acuerdo? Solo es bread, siempre va a ser bread. No nos olvidemos que el sustantivo incontable siempre va a ser tal cual. Lo máximo que podemos agregar es el son, nada más para indicar que hay algo de esta cantidad, ¿de acuerdo? Uh -huh. There isn't an egg, there aren't any egg, y el sustantivo incontable pues será there isn't any bread, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces... En los sustantivos plurales, cuando usamos el zombie any, también se va a usar lo mismo para sustantivos incontables. Pero no te confundas, no, te, no, no tengas dudas sobre el respecto. Tú tienes que enfocarte y darte cuenta que hay un sustantivo incontable. Hablamos de bread, de milk, y cuando va a pasar esa situación te das cuenta que es singular. Entonces igual tienes que usar el is 
o el isn't, ¿de acuerdo? Y ahora acompañado del sum y any, solamente para cuantificar o decir que hay algo de esa cantidad nada más, ¿de acuerdo? Is there an egg? Are there any eggs? And what do you think about this? Ajá, eso es. Is there any bread? Uh -huh. Listo. Como que dice la regla, ¿no? We use some any with plural countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Usamos el some y any con sustantivos plurales contables y con sustantivos incontables. Ahí está una, hay que tener cuidado, ¿no? Expressions like carton of, a bottle of, and a glass of, make uncountable nouns countable. Estas expresiones como a carton of, un cart una caja de, un cartón de, a bottle of, una botella de, and a glass of, una taza de, o vaso de, hace que algunos sentidos contables se vuelvan contables. Por ejemplo, milk es incontable, pero si yo digo a carton of milk, ya se volvió contable porque estoy usando el A, que estoy poniendo la cantidad, un cartón o una caja de leche. Es una, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces hay que tener cuidado también con ello. ¿Listo? Eh, vamos a practicar algunos ejemplos. There isn't any rice. There isn't any rice. Is there an onion? Is there an onion? Uh -huh. Listo, a ver, vamos a practicar un poquito a ver si hemos comprendido. A ver. There is a banana, ok, vamos a ver, a ver, soda o sodas, there is some soda, ajá, uh -huh. so it means that soda is uncountable, uh -huh. listo, acá vamos a usar el a, am, sam y any, sabemos que el any se usa en forma negativa o en forma interrogativa, de acuerdo, ¿Qué dicen, is there cereal, cereal is countable and uncountable, What do you think? ¿Cómo te das cuenta si cereal es contable o incontable? Pues, cereals existe o no es factible decir ello. Ok, let's see. There, is there any cereal? Hay algo de cereal. Entonces, cereal es incontable. ¿De acuerdo? Incontable. Todas las oraciones que van a ver que tienen el A, el AN, son contables. ¿De acuerdo? Son contables en singular. Miren, observemos. There is carton of orange use. Use es incontable. Pero al ver acá carton, pues se vuelve contable y va a ser a carton. There isn't sugar. Sugar sabemos, como, vamos, como nos damos cuenta, pues tiene una... Una apariencia de singular, claro que sí, pero no es contable. Es incontable porque sugar, al cambiar a plural sugars, no existe. Igual que sodas y tampoco cereals, ¿ok? Entonces diría, there isn't any sugar. Are there potatoes? Está más fácil, ¿no? Are there any potatoes? The ice cream, there is sun ice cream. Hay algo de helado. Sun ice cream, ok. Very good, excellent. So let's continue with more exercises. Here says, uh, look at the picnic list and write questions and answer. I uh, use the reason that reason there. That's okay. Well, uh, I strongly uh, can consider that this is not uh, necessary for you because what you have to do in your exercises is to identify if the noun is uncountable and uncountable. Entonces lo que podemos practicar ahora es lo siguiente. Bread, uncountable. X, countable. Cheese, uncountable. Potato chips, countable. Ham, uncountable. Apples, countable. That's okay. Very good. Excellent. Entonces no nos olvidemos de la estrategia, ¿de acuerdo? Si tienes dudas y, si tienes dudas en saber si un sustantivo es contable o incontable, ¿qué es lo que tienes que hacer? Buscar el plural y ver el sentido de ello. Si bread consideras y no tienes tus dudas si es contable o incontable, decir, ¿existe bread? No, entonces es incontable. Ex, entonces existe ek, entonces es contable. Cheese, cheeses, no existe, solamente es cheese, nada más, ¿de acuerdo? Listo, espero que haya sido de, de su mayor agrado y pues 
muy contento de haberlos apoyado y nos vemos en una próxima oportunidad. Goodbye. I'm sorry you can watch my face. <laughs>